Okay, so I'm sure everyone has seen this cup of coffee before, or even this logo of a green border with a little mermaid in the middle. You've probably seen it at least once, or maybe even every day. I saw a couple of you guys drink Starbucks. Um, I'll be talking about Starbucks, how it came to be, how it affects us, and to simply explain the history in today's world revolving around Starbucks. Um, I've been researching this topic for a little bit, and I'm also happy to say that I'm a victim into buying one of the delicious drinks. Um, <coughs> I'll outline the basic elements of Starbucks. First, let's look at the facts and figures of the Starbucks Coffee Company. According to the company fact sheet, Starbucks was founded in 1971 in Seattle, Washington, near the Seattle Pike Place Market, and to this day, the first Starbucks is still open to the public. The coffee's original name was coffee, uh, Starbucks Coffee Tea and Spices, and then later changed into Starbucks Coffee Company when it became an international chain. Um, the title of Starbucks was actually named after the first name of the famous literature Moby Dick. As of February 2008, there are at least one Starbucks in all 50 states, including the District of Columbia. There are approximately 7,000 company-operated stores and 4,000 licensed stores in the United States. In addition, there are almost 2,000 company-operated stores and 2,700 licensed stores internationally, almost 43 countries outside of the United States. After some history, I'll be moving on to who the targeted customers are with Starbucks. In recent newspapers, there are claims that Starbucks is identi identifying a new group of customers flooding in every day. In an article written by Allison Lynn of MSN msnbc.com, she states that Starbucks is rethinking their stance on the youngsters because the company starts to acknowledge that teens and children are part of their market base. Starbucks spokesman Brandon Foreman says that the company has no specific plans on targeting the 18 and younger crowd but has certain drinks available to, them, available to them, such as the Frappuccino menu. Although they do not have any plans yet, they do recognize the coffee house chain as a family and friends venue. In another newspaper, The Star Online, it is said that the Mocha Frappuccinos are the best seller towards the 15 and 30 age group. Its executive director of Starbucks Coffee, Datuk Francis Lee, says that the younger crowd tends to enjoy cold beverages while the older group prefers hot drinks, such as premium coffee. Generally speaking, there is no specific target age group for Starbucks, as I mentioned that children are now enjoying coffee as much as the older folks are. And lastly, we'll be looking at some reasons why Starbucks has gotten so popular over the years. Starbucks Coffee House is known for the relaxing and quiet atmosphere where people can enjoy sips of their warm drink. According to a newspaper article written by reporter Shabung Fook, he states, they come to relax and mingle with friends, even if they have to fork out extra money for coffee that could go instead into essentials like food and gas. It's a place to sit down and chat the time away amid artwork, light music, and cushy chairs. The calming mood of Starbucks has attracted many different types of people, ranging in all kinds of age and race. Not only is Starbucks a place to stay to rest and unwind, the drinks are also another reason why Starbucks continue to rise in popularity, even in this downfall economy. An office assistant in Fuchs article, Kelly O'Brien says, you can't just do anything just because the world is in a recession. You don't have to be extravagant. A drink at Starbucks is cheaper than a meal at a restaurant, including tips. Um, this graph is done by five members of a study. On um, the sample size is 42, meaning they only interviewed 42 people. And when they asked the question, how would you rate the coffee quality at Starbucks? Majority, 47% of them said it was good, and then 36% said it was excellent, 17% said it was fair, and almost 0% it was, said it was poor. And then when they asked why did it get so popular, 29 of the 42 said it was because of the product, their quality, variety, and service. Nine people said it was because of the convenience of stores, where it's located everywhere, and how it looks good. 5% said it was a status symbol of their reputation and another five said it was because of good marketing and brand management. Today I've explained to you how Starbucks is seen through the eyes of the modern world by reviewing its history, who goes to buy Starbucks the most, and why it is so well liked throughout the world. So the next time you go to Starbucks, I hope you understand how far it came to build its reputation, and even in this hard economy, just relax and enjoy this sip of coffee made by the best. Thank you.
So Aaron, what did you think? I thought it was really good. Her thesis, thesis was really clear, and I could see her visuals fine, and I'm like in the back. And um, she uh, she cited her. Um, there was a lot of citations in her speech, and she read a lot from the paper. But when she um, looked at the audience, she like it was like she was talking to us. So I thought it was really good. All right. Uh, I like the use of the visual as your attention device. The topic's really clear. I think your thesis is very general, and uh, you, you need a little bit more focus. But the preview sets up what the main points of the speech are going to be. That's okay. Uh, I thought that you had good supporting material. In the first section, with all the statistical data on the Starbucks company, we don't really get much of a source citation on that. And I didn't think that your explanation about the name was very clear, partially because you're rushing through it. I think it might be clearer if you took a breath, slowed down, and talked to us about it instead of just representing it as another piece of data to throw out. It, it doesn't get integrated into the speech very well. Later on, I thought you did a better job of that when you were talking, for instance, about uh, why people uh, prefer Starbucks, or in that last section where you've got all the visual materials included, I thought that you talked to us a little bit more effectively. Uh, it's, it's organized topically for the most part. It sounds like you're making transitions between points, although they're not always smooth. Sometimes it's just the next, next, next sort of thing that's going on there. The visual materials are not part of the first three sections of the speech. They don't really seem to be included in the speech. They're their own section toward the end, and they appear to be separate data, similar to what you had in the first point, but not connected to that first point. And I think that they would have worked better if you had integrated them into the speech. Uh, they were generally large enough to see for a room this size, although just barely. And uh, I don't know how the extreme sides of the room would feel about it. It might be a little bit problematic. It wasn't, it wasn't too bad. But I think that uh, you could probably make it easier for people to see and, like I said, integrate it more into the speech. Uh, I think you're a little bit uh, script dependent in the first part and right at the very end you show the same kind of thing because if you were a little bit more aware of the relationship with the audience you wouldn't be stepping on your exit line which you've got a nice exit line on but you just kind of you know, get through it, rush through it again with the presentation. So we're gonna. We, it appears that we've got a lot of things to work on on the next go around. Everybody's having a little bit of trouble with those kinds of things. Uh, technical things, though, were pretty solid. Thank you.